The US State Department recently issued a report detailing how China dominates some 80% of the global lithium market. And the People's Republic is apparently building over 100 new lithium-ion battery plants, all scheduled to come on stream by the end of this decade. Time to panic? Join us now on a trip down the mines as we ask how China is taking over lithium production. Lithium is the 25th most abundant metal on Earth, and it's witnessing a huge spike in demand. Why? The batteries in your phone, your tablet and your laptop all run on so-called lithium-ion technology. Lithium-based batteries are easy to recharge, relatively cheap, chemically stable and lightweight. And as our civilization begins its inevitable transition to electric transportation over the coming years, with as many as half of all new vehicles in the US supposedly EVs by 2030, lithium will soon dominate the transport sector as well as personal electronics. The problem is, EVs use up rather a lot of lithium. The Tesla Model S, for example, hogs nearly 140 pounds of the stuff, roughly the same amount of lithium you'd find in 10,000 smartphones. So as governments around the world chivy and harass their citizens into making the switch over to EVs, you can begin to see how any nation with a monopoly on the stuff might begin to acquire an unfair geopolitical advantage. Global production of lithium was around 26,700 tonnes in 2018, by the way. It's projected to double to 58,300 tonnes by the year 2022. How come China gets to hog all the lithium? Or white petroleum? as geology dorks on the internet have taken to calling it. It's certainly not down to natural abundance. It's estimated that, despite being roughly the same size, China boasts naturally occurring lithium reserves of only around 4.5 million metric tons. The US has 6.5 million metric tons of the stuff, although it's tough to extract and rubs up against vocal opposition from powerful American oil interests. The People's Republic of China is anxious to reduce its reliance on foreign oil imports and drastically address its chronic air pollution problems, so incentivizing the growth of the EU V market using homegrown lithium is seen as a bit of a no-brainer. So how does China dominate lithium supply? The most lithium-abundant places on Earth are, for now at least, South America and Australia. In Bolivia, the Salar de Uyuni is a 4,000 square mile snow-white salt flat way up in the mountains, and it contains a veritable ocean of lithium-rich brine. Bolivian brines are believed to hold 21 million tons of the resource, or about a quarter of the world's usable supply. These great natural vats of water are essentially dried out in order to extract the precious metal, in much the same way sea salt is produced in those old-school coastal salt pans. China has drawn on the phenomenal financial firepower of its state to invest many billions of dollars in Bolivian mining operations and elsewhere in the so-called Lithium Triangle of Bolivia, Chile and Argentina. In many cases, China has leveraged the instability of South American governments to its advantage, dangling its checkbook in the face of nations struggling under the yoke of hyperinflation and internal political strife. Brine extraction is just one way of getting lithium out of the ground. The other way, hard rock mining the stuff from spodumene, has China investing big in Australia. Spodumene, since you ask, is a pretty prismatic crystal element found in pegmatites, which are naturally occurring mineral-rich deposits that occur when magma from deep inside the earth penetrates the crust, forming energy-loaded seams. Australian pegmatites are a highly covetable resource, so much so that China's Tianqi Lithium, a Sichuan-based colossus that's arguably the biggest player in the field, invested as much as $2 billion in Western Australia's Green Bushes mine, just to secure the precious lithium for its battery production. Production. It's worth noting at this point that it's not just lithium China dominates the supply of. The People's Republic also oversees some 62% of global cobalt production and around two-thirds of graphite production, both essential components of lithium-ion batteries. But in terms of just lithium, it isn't only the mining rights China has been snapping up. Processing, turning that raw lithium into useful products like batteries, is also dominated by China, with some 73% of global battery manufacturing capacity currently situated in the People's Republic. The US is second place, by the way, with a measly 12% of production capacity. Still, it isn't all bad news, and China hasn't always got its own way of late. In Bolivia, remember, that's the main global source of lithium brine, a German company called ACI Systems saw off the might of China to secure its own lucrative mining and battery production plant deal at the nation's biggest deposit. That was later cancelled in shady circumstances, but still, China didn't win outright, and still hasn't. The Chilean government has loudly expressed concerns that China has too much control over the market, giving oxygen to a nascent anti-China movement at home. 
And last year, Tianchi Lithium was humiliatingly forced to sell its 49% stake in Greenbush's Australian hard rock mine to a local company called IGO Limited. So what's been going wrong for China? The classic rules of supply and demand. Companies and nations, in particular China, scrambling to secure new sources of lithium to meet expected demand overshot, opening too many extracting facilities too quickly. This created a glut of supply, which led to an abundance on the market, which naturally drove down prices. Tianchi's meteoric rise to private lithium superpower was underwritten by an estimated $3.5 billion in loans from China's state bank. When the price of lithium collapsed by 60% due to oversupply, the firm had no choice but to sell its assets just in order to remain solvent. To be clear, China, in particular another giant firm you should keep an eye out for called Gang Feng, is still a force to be reckoned with. And such is the might of the Chinese state, its own internal policies can massively affect the price of lithium worldwide. When the Chinese government partially wound down a financial incentive scheme designed to encourage young families to buy EVs, international markets were spooked. So much so, Beijing was forced to put out a statement insisting that it wouldn't be cutting subsidies again anytime soon. Extracting lithium isn't a straightforward business, and even old-school mining giants like Rio Tinto are struggling to gain a foothold in the market for the new white petroleum. As technology evolves, new ways of extracting lithium, potentially from clay, could shift the balance of power away from China, or open up supplies of lithium from more friendly nations. Canada is believed to be a rich source, with the forthcoming Thacker Pass project set to be the world's second largest lithium mine when it fires up in 2022. In addition, commercially substantial lithium deposits have been reported in Germany, the Czech Republic, Portugal and Sweden. Perhaps the real answer to breaking China's stranglehold will come from another source entirely. Those rare earth dorks we mentioned earlier are increasingly excited about a new player in the field, called Vanadium. For now, primarily used as a steel alloy in cars and jet engines, Vanadium, relatively abundant in the US, especially around Utah, could do the same job as lithium, more cheaply. Best of all, vanadium doesn't suffer the degradation over time that inevitably renders all lithium-ion cells useless, especially the one in your phone. Vanadium is still a bit speculative at the moment, however, and lithium-ion technology will be with us a long time yet. Lithium industry expert Joe Lowry says the danger posed by China's lithium dominance is frequently overstated in the media. According to Lowry, President Joe Biden's ambitious projection that half of all new vehicle sales will be EVs by the end of this decade won't come to pass, so it's not that big a deal. He also suggests our aging president is simply trying to channel his inner Elon Musk, announcing a goal he knows won't happen purely to get attention. As a lithium miner might say, where's the lie? What do you think? Should China's dominance of lithium production inspire elemental terror in the rest of us? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe for more Metal AF tech content.